Rick, how are you? I'm great. Great. Rick, we're here you. talking Bellevue University today, obviously. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do at Bellevue University? Let's start there. Yeah, so uh, I am the dean of our design and development department at Bellevue University. And so really what that group is about is um, it's a group of individuals that are kind of in three different areas. So one of our areas of focus is instructional designers. And this is a group of about 10 or so folks that help faculty think about how to design their courses, how to take what they do in the classroom and convert it and think about how to do it in the online environment. Um, and so they're very well versed and experienced in adult learning principles and active learning and applied learning types of concepts and how to do those types of things, um, you know, in, in the online or digital world. That's, that's it. Let me, let me start. That's yeah. super interesting. So let's look at it from that angle. So let's say I am a professor coming from a traditional, traditional university where I stood in front of a class that, you know, did that, that routine. And now I'm coming to be an instructor at Bellevue University and I have this great idea for an online class. Walk me through what you would do with me if I'm, I'm, giving you the idea and then then what happens? How is it developed <clears throat> from there to a class? Yeah, so you know, a lot, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll spend time learning about what it is that you wanna get done in the course. Like what are the things you currently do in the class? What are the types of activities? What are the things that bring kind of that learning to life? Yeah. The things that you where you see the aha moments happening from students or the things that they know that they struggle with. Right. Like what are the areas where they're gonna have issues or things that you know are gonna be tough concepts for them to, to think about or to learn? And so they'll kind of walk through that process and think about, okay, so how are these types of uh, activities done in the class today? What do you currently do to help those students get through those moments or get through those times where it's difficult to learn or understand? Um, and then they'll start to help think about, are there things that we could do in the world where you're not necessarily face-to-face -face with that student to be able to convert those activities to say, okay, is there a game we could play? Or is there a simulation we could create? Or is there an activity or an interactive element that we might be able to do or videos. Um, so that department allows, we have a lot of those resources to be able to do videos, to be able to do animation, um, to be able to do, uh, you know, all types of interactive type of gaming or tools and resources yeah. that give you the ability then to say, okay, how do we now move this to, let's create that simulation, or maybe we create a little scenario or a case study. Um, and or a game that they might interact with to be able to get the concepts. Um, and so we would walk you through that approach to say, okay, each week, and then it's just differing concepts. Yeah. You know, where are the other areas where they might struggle? What are some things we might be able to do to get the students engaged into the learning so that it's just not this read-write, read-write kind of thing? So there is, it's almost as if you developed a science to making it work for your students. Is that correct? I mean, yeah, yeah. There's a, definitely an art and a an science art, to an it. Art right? and a science, I think it's yeah. probably more yeah. art because it is thinking differently. It's thinking creatively, um, because in this day and age, uh, video, for example, yeah. is very easy in this day and age more so to do now, right? right? So it's not as unique or as creative, but there are ways you can make them creative, right? Or in t some types of simulations or interactive components to it. Um, but the more I think you can. And, and the way they'll always approach it as a good instructional designer is they'll be thinking about how do I immerse the student in the learning, right? How do I take them out of their current environment to put them in a situation where they feel like they're part of that learning, right? right? So that it's not something that is at a distance. It's something that I feel like I've learned these concepts. I've kind of read through some of these things or maybe I've watched some videos or seen some things to say, here's what I should be applying in my world. Here's what I should be thinking about, for example, as a manager in my role. Um, but now I want to put you in a situation where you have to react to that. Yeah. How do you take what you now learned and use it in a place or apply it in an environment where you feel like now I'm, I'm part of that. I'm immersed in that learning. Probably a two part question here. So we're seeing, we're seeing currently what's happening in the world. You're seeing people, uh, you're seeing entire school systems, public school systems, huge universities. They are being forced to do um, what you're talking about right now. Um, but you're not seeing any of that thought being put into what they're doing. They're setting up, scrambling to set up Zoom classes and do all that. So this isn't some, something that you guys just started doing. Right. Right? Yeah, so, no. And that's why I think for us, the I mean, the real beauty in it is that the transition for us, yeah, it did take a little bit of time to, you know, for our residential courses to yeah. make a bit of that transition. But those course content and how students got to that information, even in the residential or classroom courses, mm -hmm. 
was still through the digital, like still through our learning platform. So that content was already there. The types of things that they do were already there. So for us, the transition was much simpler, much faster, much easier. Now, it wasn't without you know, some sure. of that, but there was a lot of support in place because we knew how to do it already, right? right? So a faculty did, and I expected, I'd be honest, I, I expected a huge influx from faculty beating down our door to say, hey, can you help yeah. us do this? We got a few couple trickle requests that came in to do some things that they wanted to convert to the online environment. But for the most part, our faculty were comfortable making that transition because they had already been working in the platform and working with that digital learning format already. I mean, it was, wow. again, we've been doing it for over 20 years. So for them, you know, most of those faculty, they're already comfortable in that environment. So um, we have been working with them. And as we transition through that process, uh, as we continue down that, that road uh, of keeping those residential classes in this environment, yeah. um, there are things that they want to do a little bit more you know, differently. And some of those things take time, right? right. To create a simulation or to create these types of games. Right. It's not like a, a quick conversion. And so, um, you know, we're working on a few of those types of projects as well to do some more sophisticated things um, in that environment. I find it interesting that you started, you helped develop this program in 1998. You said that's kind of when yeah. that was, so that's 20 plus years ago now. What's the biggest difference than what you anticipated then when you were starting to think about it as to obviously technology in 20 years? I mean, 98, I didn't have a cell phone, probably didn't even have a computer at home at yeah. that point. So now at this point, what's the biggest change that you've seen or something that, you know, you did, just didn't anticipate that has been a pleasant surprise? Yeah, no, that's a that's a really good question. I think technology definitely is, has been... Yeah. You know, as things move so quickly, it just allows you to do, you know, you look at virtual reality, augmented reality, things that we're starting to play around with a little bit um, to get it, you know, as I was talking about that immersive learning experience yeah. where it really puts you literally, you feel like you're in that environment. Um, you know, but outside of those types of things, I think one of the things that I've, I've seen over this time that I think has been, I don't know if it's been a real surprise, but it is, um, it's been an interesting transition. And that is, you know... It, Back in the late 90s, as we were working on this, a lot of the move was to move to purely asynchronous, right? That is, you did it on your own time. You were bound by weekly timeframes, but how you got that work done and the things you did was was basically on your own time, right? And, and it does take a, 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 you know, a kind of a, a focused or a dedicated learner to be able to learn in that right. environment because you have to be your own project manager per se, right? You have to manage your time and be organized it's easy to kind of fall behind if you're were those not. The, uh, the, were those the initial reasons that you started to do it? Like you were seeing a trend of people not wanting to have a regular schedule. So you thought if we create an online environment, they could do it whenever they want. Right. right? Yeah. That's why that, you started that, Absolutely. Right. That asynchronicity sense. piece of it was a huge benefit because right. now students were bound to a time and place every single week for several hours. They could do it on their with with the way the work environment and life was moving mm -hmm. at such a pace. You know, I mean, you look at families these days and how fast things are moving with right. kids in different sports. And so they needed their own flexibility right. to be able to learn on their own time. Um, and so that is, I think that was why it immediately took off. Um, but again, I think a lot of universities struggle with that because what they did was they just took their lectured environment, which we know from an adult learning principle is not the best way to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and they just ported it to the online environment and said, hey, look, we've got online courses. Um, and that's that's not the right approach in thinking about how, because you really do need to think of how you redesign what you're doing in the classroom. You still may be achieving the same objectives, but it's how you get to those objectives that's uniquely different. And so I think what we're starting to see now, and, and it's interesting because I think this whole Zoom thing is, you know, and there's different platforms. I mean, yeah. there's multiple different platforms to do that. But what I think in that curve now as we're starting to come around the other side, um, and I mean from a learning perspective, is learning is social, right? So it's a social in a way, and, and typically where you see those aha moments are when students are interacting with each other, yeah. they're interacting with their instructor, and they're interacting with the content, right? And so if you can design it in a way that allows them to do that, what was missing kind of in the asynchronous environment or that you know kind of learn on your own flexible time environment is students missed out on a bit of that social piece, right? right? So they missed out on that immediate feedback. They had to wait for responses. They had to wait for people to reply back. They had to wait for 
this environment is now, what we're starting to see is students wanting that, looking for more of that face-to-face, -face, um, you know, instant feedback. I mean, we're in a text instant yeah. feedback world. And so they are, and so when we've done that in a lot of our courses where we brought in kind of this connected learning where we're bringing back a lot of those, we might not make it necessarily a requirement, but the students that attend those live sessions with the people in those classes are hungry for it and they love it and they come back every time. And so we're, I, I think we're starting to see more of that. And I think that's why you're seeing a lot more of the uptick of the use of those types of platforms. And we've been, again, doing that for several yeah. years, bringing that, that live piece back. And we've started to see a lot of that. We want more, we want more. And so that's, that's been kind of an interesting um, approach and kind of a difference. But that's, again, what technology has allowed us to yeah. do because we probably wouldn't be able to do that to the level we can now 20 years ago, right? right? The, the video capabilities and that type of just weren't strong enough to be able to support that. Um, and so I think what we're seeing is the technology being able to keep up with it. And it's not just the live piece, because I think what some of these universities are, are doing, and as you talked about scrambling mm -hmm. to kind of move to that space is again, they're just porting their live lectures. Right. And now they're just lecturing for Something that for you learned hours. in 1998. Yeah. That really doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, well, if you're just going to lecture in these types of environments for two hours, people are going to tune out. It's like, right. this is not what I'm looking for in a live interaction because it's really not interaction. It's a monologue, not a dialogue. Right. Right. So right. I don't get to interact. And so, um, so I think that's been for me, you know, a, a really interesting kind of move back into that world. I'm guessing that um, in your position at, at Bellevue University that you have to be aware of the constant, I mean, te as technology changes at the lightning speed currently, what are the trends that you're kind of seeing or that you're yeah. anticipating <clears throat> or, you know, looking forward to or are prepared for? Just talk about what the future of online, this online community looks like for yeah, Bellevue so University I, and for you. <clears throat> I mean, one of the things that I think is important for for universities and, and part of what I always try and do is not just look at technology for technology's sake, right? Yeah. Lots of new trends coming out, lots of great, you know, concepts and ideas about how things will work in the in the learning environment. Um, but I think part of my role is to make sure that we just don't jump on the, you know, the latest craze. Right. If it's just technology just to say we have it. Right. So I think there really has to be a purpose and an intention behind it. Um, and I think there has to be a real aspect of does it benefit and enhance the learning environment. And so part of what I look for is to make sure that whatever technology we do start to play around with or work with or test out um, has a real impact on the overall learning. And so one of the things that I've been looking at closely and keeping an eye on and also playing around with is um, that virtual reality, yeah. augmented reality types of things, right? right? We have a pretty sophisticated um, science lab or uh, biology lab at the university. And so what I envision is moving and, and trying in that space and converting a lot of some of those areas as well into these virtual environments, right? Where students come in, they put on a pair of goggles, they interact with things and they immerse themselves, right? right? And what I would call immersive learning, that's where I think we're starting to move, right? And so, but what we have to be able to do, and, and this is especially for the, what I always look for from the university standpoint is, we may not have a huge residential population, right? Mm -hmm. A majority of our students are at a distance. right? And so I've got to think about how do I create an environment that allows students who aren't going to be on campus to experience those same types of things. And that is, you know, for example, maybe instead of purchasing a textbook, they purchase a set of goggles right. and some software, and that's their learning capacity or learning tools over their entire journey with the university. And so as we create these environments where they're out immersing themselves or, you know, if I'm in a security program, I'm having to do physical security and, you know, look at right. all the different environments that I'm in. What do I see? What do I pick out? Do the things that I learn in the class now equate to how am I actually living this out in my real world right. and interacting with that learning that way? Um, and so that's where we've kind of been heading um, and testing a few of those types of environments out and been pretty successful and um, especially in, you know, where I see a lot of this initially coming into play, of course, is in the medical field. Right. Right. And so with our, our biology lab, it's a great kind of partnership with what they're doing 
uh, to bring some of that in there. So we've been playing around a lot with like a 3D model of a heart, right? And being able to slice it and take it apart and actually see nice. it physically moving and animated as though it's a live heart, but you can turn it upside down in all the different ways and take it apart to look at the different elements of it and to be able to identify the different parts. And so we're working a lot with our um, our nursing faculty and healthcare faculty um, to be able to develop those types of interactive components that make it more tangible for the students. Yeah, that's uh, that's the field trip I'd want to go on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you were with Bellevue when you, in 98, and then you left for a little bit, and you've come back. So can you just talk about the difference that you've seen or the success a, a success story that you think about um, from a student or somebody that you've worked with that, you, that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, being at Bellevue University for 10 years and then being moving into the corporate world for 10 years and, and working on some of the things that I did on that space, very similar in the digital world and e-learning, those types of things. And then coming back um, to see the department where it's grown from the time that I was there before. I mean, I was part of the department that I'm now leading, right? Yeah. So there was four of us when I was there um, and there was maybe a couple hundred students online. Yeah. Um, and so to see that transition, and when I left, we would just kind of surpass that 50% mark where over half of our students now were in that distance learning format. And so um, to see where it's grown to this level, to know the, you know, being in the fast paced corporate environment where things yeah. move at a very, very quick pace, where things right. get done fast, decisions are made fairly quickly because it's all about the to, revenue, right? right? You got to right. you gotta grow the business or you're going to die. And so... I love that kind of pace, yeah. um, and I would say in most universities or institutions, it does not necessarily move right. at that pace. Um, and so, what, really, yeah, well, <laughs> believe it or not, um, and that's where I think they, a, a lot of them have struggled because yeah. they they can't keep with the pace of what the working world and the business world needs of them, and that's why there's always this back and forth of can you keep pace with where for example, this whole job skills, right? right. And, and applied skills, and I need to upskill and reskill, those types of things. Um, to be able to do that and make those transitions is very, very difficult when it takes two to three years to get new courses or programs out. Right. Um, and the reason I did come back to Bellevue University was, was because of the pace at which they go, right? A very innovative, very creative culture, um, willing to step out into some innovative spaces and also very smart to say, hey, if we've not gone in a direction we think is going to be successful long term, they're smart enough to cut and their losses or whatever and decide, hey, it's time for us to move in a different direction. Um, and most institutions, I don't think, are willing to right. take those types of risks. And that's the part that I really, really love about Bellevue University is just that innovative, fast paced, try out new things, you know, but at the same time, do it in a, in a way that is it's smart. Right. right. It's it's thinking about what those risks are, uh, weighing those risks, um, you know, with the direction and the strategy of where they want to go. Uh, and so being part of the five year strategy plan, uh, you know, I had a really good opportunity to see where they were in all different aspects, not just the technology or the design and learning space that I'm involved in, um, but also their facilities. Um, the student experience and what we focus on in order to create the best student experience we can. Uh, thinking about the life cycle of a student as they come yeah. through and how they interact with Bellevue University and the support we provide and how we really work hard to try and create an individualized environment, right? Where they feel it's, they're not just a, a number going through the process, they're an individual student who has a, a, you know, a coach assigned to them to provide that kind of support um, and to really make sure that they are cared for all the way yeah. through their educational journey, because wow. it, it can take a while, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it could be a four or, or plus year right. type of journey, and so it's not something you can do on the quick and on the fly. It has to be thought of as how do we create an experience like that for students for that long haul? Wow! So innovation and yeah. cre creativity to describe that's that's awesome. It's interesting, you know, being inside the university, right? Y y you don't. And also being part of the university for as long as I have, um, you wonder, you know, we use the term creative, 
right? Creativity. Mm -hmm. We use the term innovation, innovative culture and those types of things. But you wonder how that's perceived outside, right? right? Is that truly the way other people see us? Or is that just the way we keep right. talking about ourselves? And so we've now created this. Well, there has been a number of calls in just the last couple of weeks where one of the first things, and these are pretty well-known, um, very credible, but also very well-respected individuals in their fields who have come right out of the gate and said, before we even get started, or even during the conversation, they immediately go to and say, I just want to tell you guys the way the, that I, and I've heard about how you guys are and what I've experienced is that you guys are at the forefront of a lot of what's going on, right? You're staying ahead of the game. You're willing to take those risks. Businesses are coming to you because they know you can help them address their issues in a timely manner right. and not have to go through that. And so um, this long type of decision making, you know, arduous red tape process to get through all that. Um, and I think they're also very good listeners, right? They know, and I think the university has been very smart and, you know, with Mary to be able to make good decisions, but to listen, yeah, right? Because it's not just a lot of times I think what, what big institutions do is they feel like they know everything, you know, for lack of a better term, because, hey, we're the ones producing the knowledge. We right. have all the PhDs. We have all these folks. We will tell you what you need, and we'll be able to deliver that for you rather than truly having, having the other side to be able to listen and say, we hear what you're saying. We can make some changes and adjustments. We can try this. What did, you know, going back to the faculty to say, hey, how can we address these types of issues? What are the types of things that we can do to be able to support where they need to go? Um, and so... In these last few calls, as I was saying, you know, a lot of them have come right out and just, and that helps validate for me yeah. to say, hey, you may think this is what you are, but I will tell you, this is what I hear what you are as wow. well, because you deliver on it. You don't just speak to it, but you actually deliver on what it is that you say you're going to do um, and to be able to support and address those needs. Because I think if that didn't happen or didn't occur, it wouldn't last very long, right? right? People would get that. People would talk and say, you know what? You know, they may say a lot of these great things, but ultimately I haven't seen them necessarily deliver on them. Um, and so that gives you the wrong type of reputation. Yeah. And as we continue to grow, we wouldn't be continuing to grow. That just, you know, good business sense would know they're not right. going to spend their hard earned money on right. things that aren't going to generate um, return right. for what they're looking for. Accountability. Yeah. yeah. You know, the direction of where things are going. Um, where we need to be thinking about what this environment's going to look like. I mean, this whole recent environment has, you know, you could see a bit of the chaos yeah. almost. I mean, for lack of a better term, of what's going on out there. I mean, it's almost in every article I read related yeah. to higher education or education as a whole, the struggle and the the fear of where do we go from here and what do we do now? Um how do we keep this going? You know, what do we need to do differently now? Who do we need to bring in? And that's why I kept reminding, you know, the folks in our department as well. You know, a, a team of our size at a university of our size is very, very unique, right? Yeah. They had the foresight to know to create that environment and to create that department to be able to support where, that whole direction early on. Right. Um, and now you also start to see, you know, more and more faculty reaching out. Um, to request some of that help, to get in inside how they can do things differently and to lean on the expertise and the talent that we have in that department to be able to do it. Oh. So that's that's why I think we're in such a good a good spot right now because we've been there, done yeah. that, right? While people so, have been doing it for yeah. a week, you've been doing it for 20 we years. Got this. Yeah. 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 Experience goes a long way. It's awesome. Thank you, man.